Welcome to Free Home Farm. I'm Sandra, and this is our 50th video upload. I am so excited. I cannot believe that we have been making videos for almost two full years, and I'm just, I just love it. I love the feedback I get from people, and I love being able to share what we do. In celebration of our 50th video, we are trying to get 50 subscribers on our channel. I think we're at about 25 right now, so just 25 more to go. So if you're watching this video, please click sub subscribe. When we have more subscribers, then our videos will show up for more people who are interested in this type of stuff. Just in case you're new to our channel, or if you have never seen any of our videos, this on this special 50th video, I am just going to give a little recap of what we have going on and a couple days ago I went to the farm visited the farm and just walked around and looked at all the animals so you'll get a little tour of the farm so let's see um, my sister and I my sister Amanda and I raise animals in order to feed our family the primary role of the animals is to provide milk meat and eggs for our two families and our extended families, and then if we have extra, we'll sell to our friends. So we raise chickens, rabbits, dairy goats, pigs, and we have some livestock guardian dogs and a couple of cats that are mostly just pets, but they're supposed to keep the rodent population down. We have three acres, just about an hour north of Atlanta. And actually, Amanda lives at the farm. Her and her husband and their son live at the farm and then I live about a half hour away closer to Atlanta and I go up there maybe two or three days a week just to like check in on things maybe deliver some feed for the animals or pick up eggs or whatever and anytime we have any sort of a special project or something that requires some extra time usually Amanda and I will do that together and a lot of times that's during the week while our husbands are at work because our husbands actually work outside of the home in town and then Amanda and I take care of the animals and the kids. We also like to encourage others who are interested in homesteading so we very often will invite people over to help us with any of the chores or any of the stuff that we do at the farm. If you're interested in learning more and you live near Atlanta just contact us and we'll be happy to share any of this. We learned everything from watching YouTube and from helping out at other farms. We did not grow up raising food or farming or anything. We grew up in the suburbs and we got our food from the grocery store. And it wasn't until we had our own kids that we started to question the quality and the ingredients in the food at the store. So we started seeking out local farmers and found out that we really enjoyed raising our own food. That's why Amanda and her husband moved out out of town into the country and we were able to take all of our chickens we had chickens and we had rabbits in the city so we were able to move the chickens and rabbits out there then we got goats and pigs and dogs and we just keep adding on we have met a lot of great farmers that are doing very similar small homesteads just trying to feed their own family or just provide some food to the community and we really like to help them and then usually they'll help us in return so any chance we get we go and we volunteer on other farms, either milking cows or processing chickens or building a fence. Whatever our friends need, we're glad to go and help them. And then we've been really blessed with a lot of people who are either experienced with this stuff or that want to learn that come and help us. So we really are trying to build a sense of community and just really help people understand where food comes from. And if they're interested in growing it themselves, we want to help them get started because we had to learn this all on our own and we don't mind paying it forward, <laughs> helping someone else get started because this is so important. Now, here's a little tour of our farm. Hello! We are, <laughs> we are on the way to the farm and it's just up ahead here and I thought every time I drive up, all the animals come running. So. I want to try to get that, try to re record that, and so you can see what it looks like when I'm driving up to the farm. We've brought some food for the pigs. I have a bunch of food scraps and some stock and stuff for the pigs, 
and I will give the chickens some feed and just kind of visit everyone, see how they're doing, and check, check on everybody. So here we are, we're about to turn in. Okay, here we are at Free Home Farm. Now, let's see. I don't know if the chickens are locked up or if they're free. Oh, there's a chicken. Let's see how many chickens come running. Oh, there they are. They're all lined up on the carport, pooping all over the carport. Hi, chickens. And there's that one. Hey, chickens. Move out of the way. Move. There she is. Hey. Okay. Well, they didn't come running. Maybe if I start walking down that way. Oh, here they are. Hi, chickens. They all, oh, they're already attacking the bag. I brought this bag of food for the pigs. Hello, chickens. You want some food? Okay, here a rooster. Let's go down here and see how they're doing. I have a whole trail of chickens coming behind me. I think a raindrop just hit, just uh, hit, just uh, hit. Me. Yeah, but it's raining. Chickens. What? Oh yeah, we'll go turn off the fence then. Yeah, I can hear something shorting out down there. Hey, piggies! This food is for you. Oh, I can see where they have been rooting up this area. That's good. We put them in here because we did want them to sort of clear it out. Do you see their food pan anywhere? All right. Thank you. Hey, piggies. Oh, you're excited. Food. Food. These are American guinea hogs. This is a heritage breed of pigs that is native to this part of the country. So they're a little on the small side. We have three males. They have been castrated. They're about five months old now. We bought them from a friend who raises guinea hogs. So this is our first, our first time raising pigs and we get to see how we like it. And if we do well this year, then maybe we'll start breeding next year. They really like the juice at the bottom. I don't know why we bother putting it in the pan. They knock it all out. And this chicken here, she was the goat chicken. Now she seems to live with the pigs. <laughs> hey, piggies. Hey. Okay, now that I've gotten nice and muddy, now we can go feed the chickens. It's been raining here for several days. Oh, the goats are all just huddled inside of their little house over there. They won't come out. At the moment, we have about 40 laying hens and about 10 or 15 roosters. That number fluctuates throughout the year just because with free range chickens, you're bound to lose a few. We use the older hens to make soup stock and any of the roosters that we hatch as well will go into the stock pot. And then in the spring, we hatch some of our own chicks and occasionally we'll buy some from a hatchery or from another local farm if they have a specific breed that we're looking for.
You know where the food is, don't you? Well, if you want me to get food out, you have to move. Oh, someone was roosting on top of the run last night. Okay, move. Not much food left, we need to get some more. I have fed the chickens the rest of our feed, which was only a couple pounds. I'm going to need to go get some more food for them. But in the process, I decided to go ahead and catch some more leghorns because just this week, we had a friend who had a, raised a leghorn rooster and could not keep the rooster. She had too many roosters and just a few hens. So we took her rooster from her and decided to go ahead and put in some of our own leghorn hens in with this rooster. So they are separate from the rest of the flock and we're hoping to get some fertilized eggs. So in a couple days, maybe a week, if we'll collect up a dozen or so eggs, then I will hatch a few leghorns and that'll just add to our flock. Hopefully, let's see if it is August now, September, October, they should start laying around the first of the year, and that'll be good because I'm sure our laying production will be down by then, being the middle of winter. But these leghorns are great layers, and they start pretty early, around four months or so. So we can hatch a few of those and just sort of replenish our flock because they are definitely good layers. And we do prefer, after doing this a while, we realized we like the colored eggs, but the white eggs are just easier. Easier to candle, easier to wash, and the, the hens are more consistent. I understand now why grocery store eggs tend to be white, because they're just all around easier to deal with. We still will keep our other breeds because we like having the variety. The variety in the chickens and the variety in the color of eggs. But our white leghorns are definitely the backbone of keeping our supply up all year. Speaking of which, I wonder if there are any eggs in the nest. We've, all, we've gotten less than a dozen eggs each day for the past three days, and I don't know if that's because it's just been rainy and cloudy, or if there's something getting in here. I hope there's not something getting into the nest. See. No eggs in here. I bet you've got some eggs under you. Let's see. Oh, two eggs under her. Grab those. I'm just going to stick those in my pocket. I'll probably crush them later when I sit down. Okay, any in here? No eggs in here. But it is still early in the day. So, I just need to get some more feed for them. Make sure they have enough protein, enough grain. And hopefully it'll stop raining and the weather will warm up. That should help. So, okay. Bye, chickens. I'm going to get you some more food. I'll bring it back tomorrow. Piper seems kind of upset right now. And I think it might be because I can hear her, the electric fence is shorting out and I think she is upset by the sound. I'm going to go check and see where that is. Hey, what's wrong? Is that scaring you? You don't like that sound, do you? I'll go check on it for you. I'll go see where it is. Whenever you hear that clicking sound, it means there's something grounding out. Well, now it stopped. 
probably just a weed or something or some tall grass that's touching the electric fence. And it's worse when it's raining. Let's see. I'm walking through this really tall grass with sandals on. I should have put my boots on. Where is it shorting? Where? We did just move this electric strand down because of, um, oh, the pig just touched the electric fence. Because the pigs were getting out. So, oh, I see. There's a little piece of fence, electric strand, touching the chicken wire. So that could be the problem. All right, so I need to go turn off the fence and then come down here and um, tie up that loose end so that it doesn't short out. I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll fix it. Don't worry, Piper, I'll fix it. Hey, goats. I hear it shorting over here too. You hear the clicking sound? And because it has rain and the grass is so wet, that's normal. I mean, it's not great. We don't really want it to be shorting out, but that's normal. The sound coming from that other fence over there was really loud. And I can tell it's really loud because it's actually shorting out on the metal fence. So I need to fix that. Okay, the fence is off now, so I can safely adjust this wire down here. Make sure it's not shorting out. Okay. Oh, looks like the pigs have been rooting around down here. That's good. Oh, the mud is really deep. Okay, so I am noticing right here, this wire is touching the fence, and there's like a yellow jacket or something. I don't know, maybe the yellow jacket got electrocuted and is stuck to the fence. I'm gonna have to just knock it off, see what happens. Okay, yeah, I think that ele that yellow jacket is electrocuted. So, let me tie this up. The fence is safely off. I'm gonna just tie this in a quick knot here. Yeah, when it grounds out with uh, grass or weeds or whatever, it, it does make a clicking sound, but that in particular, oops, was really loud. And that's just, I guess, because it's touching metal. We just adjusted this fence to keep the pigs in, and I guess it was doing a too good of a job electrifying the whole fence. Okay, that should take care of it, Piper. This is why we have dogs. They alert us if something is out of the ordinary we can tell by the way that they bark if there's a problem. And she definitely was not happy with that sound. So I took care of it. Good job. Good girl for letting us know. So I can go turn that fence back on and we'll be all set. Okay, I have turned the fence back on. And I'm not hearing the shorting sound, so that's good. Yeah, that took care of it. Okay. Even with an electric fence, you still have to check the fences every day. Because even more so, because if it goes out and you don't even know that it's out, you know, we don't really put a lot of strength in our fences, and we kind of just use whatever materials we have on hand, which can be a mixture of all kinds of different stuff, like this welded wire is a smaller gauge, and it's just not real sturdy, but it just has to be a visual barrier, and then the electric part is what really keeps the animals in. So once they learn to stay away from the yellow strand, they won't even go near the fence, if we had just the strand, if they got shocked, they might just run forward. But the fact that there's something physical in front of them, when they get shocked, they instinctively jump back. So that's how the, the theory behind the electric works, is you just need something in their vision to keep them from going all the way through the fence, 
and it's the electric that really keeps them back. Okay, I'm glad I got that fixed. Piper can relax now. I bet she's been barking at it all day. So thanks for watching our videos. If you like this video, then check out the other videos on our channel. And please like and subscribe and definitely comment if you have any questions or any comments, anything. We love to get feedback because I want to know if this is beneficial to somebody, then I want to know that they were helped or else I don't really have a reason to make videos if nobody's watching them. So just let me know what you think and if you have any questions, put it down below. Thank you so much for your support.